Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and I am the voice and face behind Wool and Spinning. I can be found pretty much everywhere as Welford Pearls and I broadcast from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. Uh, thank you so much for having a view of this video. This isn't a podcast episode and it's not a teaching uh, video. It's all about um, the Patreon support and why I do it. So it's a little bit different. It's more of an information gathering um, video and I hope that it just gives you a little bit more information as to why I started Patreon in the first place, why I continue with it and how you can possibly get involved if you would like to become a part of the community and see what goes on a little bit behind the scenes. I really want to thank those who are already supporting for your ongoing support. You guys make this work that I do here um, very meaningful and it makes me excited when I think about it and when I come into my sort of studio office quote unquote and turn on the camera every week, especially during the um, episodes that I get to do the live stream and I get to sit and chat for an hour and share my things and you guys are in the chat channel and you're interacting and you're chatting with one another as well as participating in the show and asking questions. It really makes my heart sing and I know that sounds a little bit cliche but it's true and I never thought that I would have friends all over the world who are a part of this community and who I can honestly say are friends and a lot of that is because of the Slack channel and the Ravelry group. Um, what would we have done without Ravelry? It's just an incredible uh, piece of software that has really married um, our love of the craft and making with um, finding one another around the world because there are very, very few of us who are spinners. Um, it's definitely a cult sort of um, interest. And um, while knitting is gaining in popularity, I think spinning is still very much a sub um, interest of that. And many of us are knitters turned spinners, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's definitely my story. And the more that we want to learn about yarn and the more that we want to learn about sort of what happens when we spin and how, when we make our yarn and all of our different tools, we need a forum to talk about that and a place to go and a place to connect with one another and share those things. Because many of us are living in communities that don't necessarily have other people that we can connect to about these things. So I really want to thank those who are supporting the show and who have, there are a few of you who've been with me from the beginning and I, I just want to say how much I appreciate you and how much your support means to me. Um, <clears throat> when I first started Patreon, I never thought that I would still be doing it a year and a half later. It's been about 18 months, just over now, that I've been doing Patreon. It's been just an incredible ride. Um, I have learned a lot. I have trialed different things. We've started things. We've stopped things. We've tried things differently. Um, we've reinvented things. We've constantly been changing things around. And I think I've kind of finally found a place now with Patreon, with where we're at right now, where I'm really happy with sort of how things have unfolded. I'm really enjoying doing the radio show every month. I really enjoy enjoy doing the how I spin content that's a really fun way for me to interact with you guys and show you what I'm working on at my wheel or on my spindles without um, interrupting the regular scheduled show to show you some of that so what I thought I would do today in the video is just to kind of update you on some of those things and where we're going for 2018 since we are wrapping up 2017 and coming to the end of this year and like I said I've learned a lot and I really want to use that learning to uh, move forward as we move into a new year. So um, when we're creating, it's so important to have fun and it's really important to feel excited about what we're doing. And something that happened to me back on Halloween was a really, uh, a, a, a really good reminder for me of the importance of having fun and the importance of creating with joy. Um, on Halloween, you may remember that I made that Halloween bat and I had the crazy music and it was meant to be just totally silly. Um, and the video was of me making the bat and it was um, just really fun for me to make. I think I made it in about an hour and I spun up the bat a couple of weeks later when I was with some girlfriends and it really reminded me of the joy that comes with making things. And often I take my spinning and my knitting very seriously. If you've been watching the show for a while, I analyze my projects. I sometimes overthink things. I get a little bit paralyzed sometimes when I'm creating because I can't make decisions and I'm having difficulty sort of saying, yeah, this is what I want to do. And I don't take myself too seriously when I'm talking about some of that stuff, but I think sometimes others think that I'm being really, really, really serious. Um, and it's not that I really care if something works out or doesn't. I'm more than happy to rip things out, which those of you who know me really well know how quick I am to rip things out. 
However, with the podcast and with creating content and whatnot, and when I'm working on my projects, I'm often thinking about the things that I want to say on the show. And so it does get to be quite serious and it does get to be quite um, analytical. And I start to sort of really analyze my projects. And making that Halloween bat really reminded me of the joy that comes from making and the fun that we can have. And that's something that I'm going to really try to hold on to um, through 2018 is that that the joy of making and the and the fun that we can have and and not taking things quite so seriously. I've been um, really this year feeling a little bit stressed out about how much my stash has grown. Um, I've brought some yarn into the house. I brought some some fiber into the house. I've been gifted some things. It's gotten to be a bit overwhelming. And instead of feeling really um, downtrodden by that and like there's this big weight on my shoulders, I've really um, taken a step back and I've decided to really try to approach it with joy. And shopping from my stash and planning my projects for 2018, I feel really excited about some of the things that I've got going on. Uh, We've been doing the HAP along in the group and we kind of started that in 2017, but we're going to keep that going into 2018. And I'm really excited about sort of thinking about what some of these projects look like. So bringing that back to what that's going to look like for the Ravelry group and for um, the podcast, we've always had, or for the last two years anyways, we've had this um, spin and knit along or spin and make along called a a spackle basically is what, what they're called, where you spin your yarn and then you make it into something, whether you're weaving or knitting or crocheting or whatever. Um, and we've, it's called Zero to Hero. So for those who are new and are sort of just checking us out for the first time, our Zero to Hero was sort of a big thing. It went all year. It was from the raw fiber, whether it was comb top or anything else, all the way through to your finished object. We're going to dump Zero to Hero for 2018. Um, I really waffled about this decision, but the reason for this is that I really want to take the opportunity to look at the things that I'm working on and the things that I want to pull from my stash and sort of zero it down onto some more specific things. There are quite a few people in the group who've never spun and knit socks. There are people in the group who've never spun and knit for a shawl or a hap. There are people in the group who've never spun and knit a sweater. Um, There's all sorts of things that we want to make and want to do. And I think having some more um, focused conversation on what those projects are that we want to work on um, are going to give us some, give people an opportunity to work in smaller groups um, to work through those, those learning curves of making socks for the first time or of making a sweater for the first time. And I'm really excited to explore that a little bit more with you guys as we move forward so that we can have um, a year-long sock along where you're knit you're spinning and knitting your socks and whatever that looks like maybe you bang out a few pairs because you really want to learn that skill and that's something that you've really wanted to do for a while and now you've got the focus in a small group to work with um, to do that and there won't be numbers or anything you won't have to sign up but you'll um, have an opportunity to work more closely with people who are working on the same thing rather than throwing us all into one sort of zero to hero, do whatever you want kind of thing. So I'm hoping this can be more of a community building thing that you guys can work together and say, hey, I've never done this before and I really need some help and some direction. And the other people can say, hey, I've actually done that part before. Here are some pointers. This is how I got started. But now, hey, I'm stuck on this part and can I get some help with this part? So that's sort of my vision and I'm going to be setting some of that up over the uh, Christmas break in December and you'll see some things change in the Ravelry group and on the Slack channel as well. I'm going to archive a whole bunch of channels on um, Slack so that they will no longer be active and we're going to kind of restructure things a little bit so that we've got some, some of our sort of more small group focused Um, things going on in there rather than um, having all these different channels with all these different um, topics. For those who are on the Slack channel, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, So, And for those who aren't, don't worry about it unless you join and then we'll walk you through it and we'll help you navigate all of that. The monthly teaching content has been a big focus for me. I have to work on it every month and it's become a bit of a chore. Um, The only reason for that is because sometimes I'm working on something that there isn't really a specific aspect of that project that's a really great teaching moment. Um, Often it's a bigger teaching moment and it gets rolled all together into the How I Spin content, which is part of the Enhanced Early Bird content. And the Enhanced Early Bird, um, you guys get the Woolen Spinning radio show a week early um, and you have access to everything else. You get the Thoughtful Spinner PDF, you get the teaching content um, along with anything else that is published for patrons only. But the teaching content goes out to all 
um, Patreon subscribers a month early. And then after that month lapses, it goes out to the public and is released um, to everybody. So that's going to change a little bit this coming year. From for Starting in January of 2018, it's no longer necessarily always going to be a video. It doesn't mean that there will be no videos. Um, as a matter of fact, January is a video. Um, but there's going to be some various uh, different formats. So there's going to be some PDFs. There's going to be some um, posts, some like blog post type things on Patreon. There's going to be some video. Um, there might even be some audio. There's going to be a whole bunch of different stuff for the teaching content. It's going to be slightly different focused. I'm going to talk a lot more about my process. Um, and we're going to explore some sort of niggly things about spinning that don't necessarily lend themselves to being explored in video because you need some detailed photos, for example, and my hands are just moving too quickly. Um, the reason for this is just to open up open up the horizons. Um, your imagination is the limit. If you have anything that you want me to explore in the monthly content, just shoot me a message on Patreon, Ravelry, in the Slack channel, on Instagram. I don't care. I keep a huge list. Um, and I try to get to them. And, uh, you know, this past year we did um, plying mistakes on a spindle. We did winding bobbins um, for a three ply when you're not, when you want to wind all your, all your, um, when you want to spin to all one bobbin and then wind them off. There's lots and lots of different stuff that we can do. But um, having a broader way of disseminating that information, not just on video, gives me more opportunity to develop what that looks like for teaching content. The other big change with teaching content, it's no longer going to be released after that one month. So when it is released to you guys at the beginning of each month, usually that content comes out on the first or the second of the month. That's it. That content it only is going on out to patrons for now, um, and it will not be seen as um, in the sort of public eye, if you will. It's not going to go out um, a month later and be released anymore. Um, the reason for that is sort of keeping the work a little bit closer to home, a little bit more in the community, um, and I some of it is going to get quite detailed some of it is going to be um, quite time consuming for me to create and that stuff is for you guys um, and it doesn't need to go out so um, I hope that you enjoy some of those changes and that it works for you and that you um, feel that you can approach me about some of the things that you would like to see as the monthly teaching content it is different from the how I spin content that goes out um, to the um, enhanced early bird subscribers um, the how I spin content takes you through from a raw piece of fiber to a finished yarn um, and I sample it I weave it I knit with it and I sort of just dis, um, disintegrate not disintegrate I I um, analyze all the different steps and how I went about creating that yarn and there's some video that goes with it there's a PDF that goes with it um, and actually I really enjoy creating that content I really like um, being able to to do that because it often helps me to work out my thought process as well to be able to put that that information out there for you so um, that will still remain the same the teaching content will change a little bit the radio show will continue to be released monthly so that's the audio podcast the RSS feed for patreon subscribers is on your landing page when you come when you're signed into patreon and you come to the woolen spinning page it is right there for you and you just grab that RSS feed and you plug it into your uh, I, your iTunes your podcast catcher whatever you use um, and then the woolen spinning radio episodes will come up every month for you and you don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to go to Patreon to look for it. The only thing that is going to change for 2018 with the radio show is there. there's going to be some bonus episodes. I have some things recorded that I'm going to share with you throughout the years, throughout the year. So, there, you know, a, a few months, I'm not going to say how many months there's going to be an extra show, but there will be extra shows throughout the year um, f as part of the radio show. So there will be extra additional um, audio with the um, radio show and that will still remain for all patron subscribers of the show. I hope you really I hope you have a chance to spend some time and check out what's going on over here at Woolen Spinning. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can get me Rachel at wellforpearls.com. You can message me on the Patreon um, platform. You can message me on Ravelry. You can message me through Instagram. I'm Wellford Pearls everywhere. And um, don't ever hesitate to get in touch and don't be a stranger. I am more than happy to spend a couple minutes and chat with you and walk you through various things. Until next time, happy spinning. Bye guys.